All right. Could you start by telling me your name? My name is Jill David. How long have you been in Cardiff? I don't live in Cardiff. I live in Dinas Powys, which is just outside Cardiff. And I've been there for 30 years. Where have you lived before? Um, before I lived in London. And before that I lived in North Norfolk. Right. Um, and what made you come to Wales? Um, uh, now I have to say, what made me come to Wales, yes? <laughs> um, what made me come to Wales? I came f to work. I, I came for a job here, yes. Would you mind telling us what the job was? or? Yeah, I came to run a hospice. All right. Um, did you do any voluntary um, activities while you were young or while you were working as well? Um, when I was young, um, I volunteered, well, I did um, Cubs, which is the, the young Boy Scouts, oh, like right. brownies, yeah? My mother um, ran the brownies, and a lot of the girls had little brothers, and they were often asked to mind the little brothers, and they said, can they come too? And so we started Cubs alongside the brownies for them. And uh, I also was a member of what was called the Young Farmers Union, and we did voluntary things at the local shows. Um, can't think of anything else then. What yeah. kind of voluntary things would those be? Um, they'd be seeing people into the car park, they'd be ta checking tickets, um, selling things. Um, oh, of course, I always worked at our village show, which was always something that everybody had to do. So that was sort of making cups of tea and looking after people at the village show. It was much of a community, yeah. Uh, what about your experience of volunteering in Cardiff or around Cardiff? My experience of volunteering in Cardiff um, has been a craft in a bay and also um, I, I'm a volunteer um, for the South and, Wales, South and West Wales Nature Reserve um, I work at a, a nature reserve to, at Lavenock, which is on the cliff tops, rather nice. And I have a link from there across to Flatholme Island, where I'm a volunteer guide for the island, and go out there and we, we do voluntary work on the island, um, keeping the vegetation down, counting the seabirds, um, painting and all those sorts of things, just to keep the, the island going, yeah. Uh, what motivated you to do all these volunteering experiences? Um, I, my motivation for doing them has been because I, I'm a, I've always been a busy person. I've worked all my life and I couldn't sit at home and do nothing. Uh, it's the same when I'm in here. I can't sit downstairs in the gallery and do nothing. So I bring my spinning wheel and I spin. Um, it, it's something I like to get out and, and see people and do things, yeah. Um, what does volunteering for Craft in the Bay entail? So what kind of activities and tasks would you do every day? Um, well, we do uh, tasks we do every day, sorry. Um, we, uh, we do anything that Simon needs us to do for the office, like um, photocopying, cutting things up, putting things in envelopes. Um, we keep the, di the gallery tidy and uh, we clean the jewellery. Sometimes we need to do that. Um, but most of the time we're working, or I am, I'm working on the desk. So I'm doing sales, taking money, wrapping things up. Um, explaining to people about the products, um, giving them information about the makers, and um, telling them about the gallery, because having worked here for a long time, I probably know as much about the gallery as anybody else. So if people ask about it, I can tell them about the building and uh, where we were before, and before, and before, <laughs> and uh, you know, how, how this has grown from something that was very small um, into a very big setup with, an, a, I don't know how many makers we have now, but certainly a lot more than we had even when we first came to this building. 
So it, it's a, a growing thing. Uh, and I like to tell them that uh, one of the things I enjoy when I come here is to see how the maker's work develops. Because people's ideas change, their views change, and they, they create more different things as time goes on. So it's quite fascinating to see how they change, yeah. Um, did you as a volunteer help um, the Makers Guild move from one location to another? Because you did mention you are volunteering for quite a while. Yes, I helped the people move when we came from the Cory building. That was where I started in the Cory building and uh, when we moved in here um, a lot of the time I came in and I was painting uh, stands and arranging things, scrubbing the floor in the toilets um, to get the paint off, you know, all sorts of jobs that were anything that was needed to be done and helping them to put up the displays as well, yeah. And all of it voluntarily? Oh yes, yes, yes. Um, I mean, we're lucky in that um, if we come down here as volunteers, because it's, it's quite difficult for me to get here um, in public transport. It means that I have to get a bus into Cardiff and then another bus out down here. So I like to come in by car and we get a free ticket for the car park over in the Red Dragon Centre, which means that it, it saves me because parking anywhere down here for a whole day can be extremely expensive. <laughs> uh, what made you volunteer with Craft in the Bay in the first place? Uh, what made me volunteer in the first place? I, um, I met Molly, um, I think you've spoken to Molly, haven't you, who's one of the original makers. When they were in the old library in the centre of Cardiff and I also met her, they also had a little shop in Cowbridge and I went there and Molly made a plaque for my house with the number on it, she, she makes these little things and I talked to her about the craft in the Blair and she explained to me why they started and um, uh, so I knew her from then and then, of course, they moved over to a shed, which is where the um, Techniquest is now. It was the old Techniquest shed. And then they moved into um, the Cory building. And when they were in the Cory building, I actually came up to retirement. And so when I retired, I had, of course, I'd known them all this time. And that's where I want to go and I went in there and they oh yes we want volunteers and so I went in there and I worked as a volunteer um, from thence onwards. Um, do you have any special memories of volunteering here that you'd like to share? Um, special memories, gosh, lots of them, <laughs> lots of them. Um, yeah, I, I mean I can remember being over in the Cory building, which was a nightmare building. We had one big room um, in which we had a, a canteen and the volunteer there served tea and cake and things. So not only were you looking after the room and if somebody wanted to buy something you had to take it through to where the manager was on the sales decks by the entrance. So you could never see you couldn't see the manager, so you had to leave your room to go in there. Um, and it was quite a, a difficult sort of situation being there. And of course then there were people lining up wanting cups of tea as well. But we had some lovely gentlemen who used to come in almost every day for a cup of tea and a cake at half past ten in the morning. And they always came in to have their tea and cake. And uh, I think they must have worked in one of the banks or businesses around and so they'd always come in and they'd have a chat and they did buy things as well so that was good but the, the tea place was quite nice and it was very social uh, of course in this building we don't have the same relationship with the cafe as we did then uh, but that was that was nice and uh, I remember the girls that worked there with us I mean we had um, Tanwen and Wendy were the two managers there at that time and um, then of course when we first moved in here there was Ron who was the in charge and of course this building was Ron's dream. Um, it was wonderful. Uh, I remember him 
complaining bitterly about ladies who came in in stiletto heels. And he said, oh, he said, they're walking, they'll ruin that floor. <laughs> well, the floor has survived very well indeed. Um, so I remember him well, and I remember his wife too, Anna, who sadly died. Um, and they, they've all been friends. It, it's interesting how, you know, when new people come, I can remember one maker, very dishy young man, arrived one morning and he leaned on the desk and he said, I am a new maker, what do I do? And I was sort of, oh, <laughs> you're lovely, you know. It's sort of, but I mean, they, they are really so nice, the makers, and some of them would have awful jokes with you. There's one who, who was busy painting one of the stands when I came in one morning, and I think he, he, I think he thought I didn't know what he made. And he said, oh, what do you think of this stuff? sticking up here. So I said, oh, I think very nice, you see. And of course it was his. <laughs> so I had to make a good opinion. Um, the other nice thing about being in here is that we get quite a lot of students come in. We get students from all the art courses in the universities come in. And you can tell them as soon as they come in because they're studying all the little notices. and. So we, we usually say to them, if you want information about the maker, you can have it. And um, you can take photographs if they are for your own personal use. So, so that's a nice thing too. The thing that scares me most in here, well, two things, are people with small children who let them run up and down, and people who come in with enormous rucksacks, because you think they're going to swing round. Um, if it's someone with a rucksack, I'll say, would you like to leave your bag here by the desk while you're looking round? <laughs> um, but it, it's sort of, uh, yeah, but it's a very nice place to work. I'm very happy here. All right. Mm -hmm. So, um, going back to our discussion about volunteering, how would you um, define volunteering? How would I define volunteering? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I suppose the principal thing about volunteering is that you do it of your own free will in your own free time, and um, that you don't accept payment for it. Um, but to me, it's something that I found very much as a sort of outlet for my personality. I like to meet people and talk to them. I'm a terrible chatterbox. I talk people's heads off. So, uh, yeah, I think it's, it's being able to communicate with people and interact with people. And that's, uh, that help you? It does, yeah. yes, it does. Um, do you think um, volunteering helped you know your community better? Helps me know my community better? Um, yes and no. Um, I don't often see people in here that I know. It's strange. And a lot of the people that I know outside, my friends locally, don't come here. If I say to them, oh, I'm down there, oh, I must go down there sometime. Um, but they, they don't come in. But I do get to know people who are not my local community in that I know the other um, managers and the other ma or the makers definitely. Um, we don't get together very much as volunteers. I, w I was saying this to Simon before I came up here that um, it would be really rather nice if we had a volunteers sort of get together coffee morning because we hear about the other volunteers. I mean I've heard about Mary and I, I had hardly met her before. The only time that I contact other volunteers is when we're doing doubling up at Christmas, when it's a busy time, we'll have two volunteers in. Um, or if um, somebody can only do a morning or an afternoon and I do the other half of the day and we have a little bit of crossover. Um, so I don't meet the volunteers much, but I do make a lot of contacts and funnily enough um, being a spinner and I come in here and I spin um, several times I've actually been able to go I've been asked to go and talk to, to groups about spinning 
which is something that, you know, <laughs> it comes as a little bit of a laugh to me because, I, I mean, I do volunteer to do that, I, um, to go to WIs and women's clubs and once I can't remember how it happened, I, I went to a um, gardening club and they were mostly men and it was really, <laughs> I had to adapt my talk and change tracks completely and, and talk about dyeing and dye plants which they found very interesting <laughs> but it, it, it is, um, but it, you do meet people and I find that I can talk to people and to the children, you know, the mother will come in and she'll go, look at that lady weaving and I said, well actually I'm spinning so uh, yeah, so it, it's it's quite a, a nice social thing that you can do. Yeah. So do you feel you're part of a community here? Yeah, I feel that yeah, as a community, I feel that the bay is my community when I'm here. Yes. In fact, in many ways, I find this more of a community than the village where I live. Because if I walk down the village street, I don't often meet anybody that I know, or if I go into the local shops. Um, so here, I will quite often see somebody that I've seen in here. Right. Um, do you think volunteering has influenced other parts of your life? Family life, social life? Um, influences on my social life? Um, a little bit. Um, I mean, we do have... This is mainly because of the friends, actually. I mean, to me, there's a big link between the volunteers and the friends. I, I don't know if all volunteers are members of the friends, but um, we do have a, quite an active friends group, and they they have events on. Um, we haven't been anywhere for the last few years. We we did go to a couple of nice exhibitions outside Cardiff, um, organised trips, um, but certainly um, I do meet with them. And um, yeah, it's, it's sort of happened a bit there, yeah, a little bit. Did uh, your volunteering make other members of your family or friends of yours volunteer as well? Did you inspire them in any way? No, <laughs> I didn't inspire. Them, but, well, um, I didn't inspire my friends because most of my friends are quite elderly. Um, people say I look a lot younger than I am, um, but you can work out how old I am if you want to. But um, most of them are much less capable than I am. I, I can't think of any of my friends who actually could manage a day here. Um, my family are not here. Um, my daughter and her family live in London, and my son and his family live in America. Uh, my sister lives down in Devon. So I don't have anybody locally that is related to me. <laughs> Do you volunteer at any of the workshops here? Um, in the workshops, um, no, I don't. They don't have volunteers in the workshops. Okay. I mean, you can actually attend the workshops, uh, and I have attended the workshops as a participant. Um, and oh, I did once help with a work with with a children's workshop for Charlotte. Yes, um, but usually they don't involve volunteers. The workshops, no. But volunteers can attend them. Oh yes, volunteers can attend them. And I mean, if you're a friend, you get a reduction on the price, <laughs> which is nice. It, it, it's a sort of uh, a little bit of a perk. So uh, yes, yes, and I have attended some of those, yeah. Do you have any advice or words of inspiration for people who would like to volunteer? Inspiration and advice for people. Yes, come and enjoy yourself. I, I mean, I just find it a pleasure to be here, um, to see the, the work that there is in the gallery, um, to meet all the people who come in. Some of them are willing to talk to you, some of them are not. Um, we get an enormous variety of people from all over the world. Uh, and I, I, I quite enjoy sort of picking out the people who, you come from America, don't you? What part do you come from? Oh, right, well, my son is in New Hampshire. You, know, you, can, you can make a rapport with them. Um, I use my Welsh a little bit. Um, Simon speaks Welsh, if you can persuade him to. Um, Margaret, who's one of the managers, she speaks Welsh, and she corrects me when I get it wrong. And sometimes we get groups of ladies who come down from the valleys, 
and they'll come in and I will experiment on them too. So it, it can be, it, it's nice, you know, um, to be able to do that, um, to show that you're sort of part of the community. That's one of the way, one of the reasons I learned Welsh, because I wanted to be able to, um, I mean, I have a Welsh name, so why shouldn't I speak Welsh? <laughs> Do you think your volunteering impacted um, the wider community or it contributed to society in any way? Has it contributed to the community and society? Um, I suppose it has. Um, it's difficult to go, j gauge how. Um, I feel sometimes that all this down here on Bay um, really doesn't relate to the community that's down here at all because the real community of Cardiff Bay are over there in, in uh, what used to be Tiger Bay and the original community. Um, when I first came to Cardiff this was all docks. I got lost down here one night and I thought help where have I ended up. I mean there were no new buildings, there was nothing. So over the years that I've been in Cardiff and around I've seen this place change from somewhere which is, um, was a very community place where people worked, where people lived, to somewhere which is quite alien to them and which is um, flats that go up for people who have holidays, people who come down, oh we must go down to the bay because that's a holiday place and um, it, it's, it's a shame in many ways, but I suppose that's progress. I mean, it happens everywhere, doesn't it? That uh, places change over time, yeah. Would you like to add anything else about volunteering that you haven't said yet? Um, what else can I say about volunteering? Um, I think volunteering is a, a very nice thing that if you can do it, it helps you. I mean, I'm on my own um, and it's a nice way to get yourself out to meet other people and to feel that you are making an input. Um, I mean the Makers Guild here um, wouldn't survive if they didn't have volunteers um, and because they have volunteers they don't have to employ as many people and if they don't have to employ as many people they don't have to take so much money off the makers. So it's all, it all works in. It makes it um, something that is valuable to everybody. So yes, I've benefited and I hope everybody else has. Perfect. Well, thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. It's been nice meeting you all. And I hope your work goes well. Thank you. Yeah.